illiterate. And each group of people, each tribe had its own dialect. Just like in our times, the English language is spoken with different dialects, different spellings, different variations. If you go to Canada, it is different than America, which is different than England, which is different than Jamaica. They're all speaking English, but they have different styles, different pronunciations, different accents, different spellings. Similarly, in fact, even more so, the tribes of Arabia at the time of the Prophet wasallam, they had varying ways of pronouncing words, of speaking the Arabic language. So you had the Quraysh dialect, which is the dialect of the Prophet ﷺ. But you had many other dialects as well. You had the Yemeni dialect, you had the Hudayl dialect, you had so many other dialects. And each of these dialects had its own slight nuances, slight differences. Nothing major, but there were some, but there were some significant differences without changing the meaning. So, when the revelation of the Qur'an started upon the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easier for his ummah to memorize the Qur'an by allowing it to be recited in these various dialects. And the evidence for this is a hadith narrated in uh, Sahih Bukhari, Sahih Muslim, uh, Muslim Imam Ahmad, in which the Prophet ﷺ said, Jibreel came to me and recited the Qur'an in one manner. And he used the Arabic word one harf. And I recited it back to him. But I asked him to increase the number of harf until he offered me two, three, four, five, until he said the Quran had been revealed in seven ahruf, seven ways of reciting. So all of them are the same in meaning. They do not change uh, the meaning, but they change in pronunciation and in the finer details. It is also reported in one hadith. Uh, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was once walking when Jibreel came to him and said, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala has commanded you to recite the Qur'an in one way. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, I seek Allah's pardon and forgiveness. I am worried my ummah will not be able to handle this. Can I, uh, can I have the allowance or the permissibility to recite the Qur'an in more than one way? Once again, the word harf or ahruf is used. And the reference here primarily is to the dialects of the Arabs. It's not that we are substituting different sentences, we're changing the meaning. No, it is basically by enunciating the letters, pronouncing the words according to the local dialects. And so once again, Jibreel allowed him to increase until they reached the number seven. And then Jibreel said, in whichever harf you recite, it would be correct, it would be the same meaning. So this is the origin of the different recitations of the Qur'an. It all goes back to the Prophet ﷺ asking Jibreel allowance from Allah to recite the Qur'an in different ways. Sometimes the Sahaba themselves were shocked at these differences because they were not aware of them until the Prophet ﷺ told them. There is a very famous tradition in which Umar ibn al-Khattab was entering the mosque and another companion by the name of uh, Hakim, uh, Hisham ibn Hakim, was reciting Surah Al-Furqan. And Umar said, when I heard him recite, I was about to jump on him in anger, because he was reciting it in a different manner than me. But I waited until he finished, and I then accosted him and said, where did you learn this from? He said, I learned it from the Prophet ﷺ. Umar said, I also learnt it from the Prophet ﷺ. How could we both have learnt it and there are these differences? So they both went to the Prophet ﷺ and the Prophet ﷺ told them, Verily the Qur'an has been revealed in seven ahruf, seven ways of reciting, whichever one you recite it is the same. Notice, Umar ibn al-Khattab heard him recite Surah Al-Furqan. So he understood the recitation, he understood what is going on. He didn't say it's a different sentence, it's a different wording, it's a different structure. All he said, it is a different pronunciation, different ahruf. So these seven ahruf were revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to facilitate matters upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How did these ahruf differ from one another? Simple. The differences were in the pronunciation of words, just like uh, in England versus America, we have different pronunciations of English. Similarly, the Arabian tribes had different pronunciations. And sometimes they even had synonymous words that were changed. Because as I said, the Arabic tribal dialects were much more different than modern English is. And so sometimes a certain word would not be used by the Quraysh, but might be used by the Yemeni tribes. So the Prophet would recite them with that word in the Yemeni dialect.
not in the Qurayshi dialect. So sometimes a synonym would be used very rarely, but there are recorded instances where a different synonym would be used. Now, so these are the seven ahruf. There are exactly seven ahruf that Allah Azza wa Jal allowed the Quran to be recited in based upon the dialects, the famous seven dialects of the Arabian Peninsula. Now when the Prophet ﷺ passed away, the Sahaba understood these differences and they went to their various lands and respective regions and continued to recite the way that they had been taught, each one as the Prophet ﷺ had taught him. But many of the younger people, not the companions, the students of the companions, were unaware of these differences. And we mentioned in a previous episode that some of these different uh, younger students met up, for example, in Azerbaijan on the Muslim uh, battlefield, the front, the front lines of the Muslim border. And one of them is reciting according to Ibn Mas'ud, the other one is reciting according to Zayd ibn Thabit, and they don't know that the Qur'an has been revealed in different recitations. And so they began fighting one another. They began accusing the other one of falling into error. And that is why Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman went back to Medina, and he said, O oh, Uthman ibn Affan, you have to combine the Ummah on one Mus'haf, on one recitation, such that all of these other differences are gotten rid of. And so Uthman ibn Affan combined the Ummah upon the recitation of the Qurayshi dialect. It was the Qurayshi dialect and all of the other recitations and versions were gotten rid of. However, even though these other versions were gotten rid of, certain elements were left, much more trivial than the actual differences in the Ahruf. And these elements primarily resolved upon pronunciation of the letters. Why? Because Uthman ibn Affan preserved the writing of the Qurayshi dialect. And so all of the synonyms that were used, that were in other dialects, were gotten away with. But still, the writing can be read in different ways. If I send you a letter, and you are in a certain part of the world, you will read the English in a certain way. And if I send it in another part of the world, the people in that region will read it in a different way. And this is all a part of the English language. And it is something that every language has. And so, the people would recite certain words. It's the same word, but they would recite it in different ways pronunciations. Sometimes there will be differences in harakat as well. And these differences were based upon how the Prophet ﷺ taught the various tribes. And these differences began to be recorded by later scholars. And these differences were then ascribed to the people who became famous for them. So these differences were named after specific people. And these people were the ones who became famous for their particular recitation. Until finally, the codification of these recitations occurred and this was done in the 2nd and 3rd century of the Hijrah and these recitations are known in Arabic as the Qira'at. The Qira'at are not the same as the 7 Ahruf. I'll, be, I'll give you a very simple analogy here which will help you understand what uh, the difference is between the Ahruf and the Qira'at. The Ahruf are what Allah Azza wa Jal revealed divinely. If you jumble up all the Ahruf together and then you spread them and let every person recite according to one of these recitations, according to some uh, mixture of these recitations, these become the qira'at. And the qira'at are named after specific people who specialized in them. And finally, as we said in the 2nd and 3rd century of the Hijrah, these qira'at were standardized, they were codified. And exactly 10 qira'at were chosen by our Muslim scholars, Ten of them were chosen because they represented the cream of the crop. They represented the best of the best. In each city, primarily one or two major qadis were chosen. So for example, in the city of Medina, there was a famous, the most famous qadi, and his name was Nafi'. And Nafi' was chosen to represent Medina. And in Mecca, there was a famous qadi by the name of Ibn Kathir. Don't get confused with the one who wrote the tafsir. The one who wrote the tafsir lived 500 years later. This is another Ibn Kathir. And so Ibn Kathir al-Makki became another qira'a. Likewise in Basra and in Kufa and in other places, every one of these places, they standardized certain scholars to become the leaders of the qira'at. And to this day, these qira'at are present in the ummah. Now for the most of us, we have no idea uh, of these qira'at because we all live in an area or region where one qira'a is recited. But if you go to other cities or you go to other countries, in particular for example North Africa, North Africa has a different type of qira'a and it is called the qira'a of Nafi', which is the qira'a of, Medi of, of uh, Medina. 
most of the world has the Qira'ah of the people of Iraq, which is Hafs and Asim al-Kufi, the people of Kufa. And this is what I assume most of my uh, viewership will also know. They will be familiar with the recitation of Hafs and Asim. And this is the recitation that is prevalent in over 90% of the Muslim Ummah. So the point of this, uh, this halaqa to summarize is that there are certain divinely revealed differences in the Quranic recitation, which vary very, very slightly. The variance is extremely minute. And these variances are memorized in specialized institutions known as the schools of the Qira'at. The average Muslim uh, is not exposed to them, he is not aware of them, but it is something that one should be aware of if one is an educated Muslim. And if you ask around in your locality, I am sure you will find people who have memorized more than one Qira'at, and you can get more information from them and get also specific details of the differences of these Qira'at. Like, share, and subscribe to create awareness. We are also available on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and PalTalk. Um, what an interesting, interesting, interesting video it has been. Concerning different ways in which people recite, I mean, that's not a big deal. You realize we're over billions of people living in different parts of the world our accents are different i don't even think that should be i mean should keep someone up at night otherwise concerning the different Korans and everything um i mean i already asked in my previous video if there's uh, other people that use other Korans I mean, there's so much you can learn from people here and there, and I'm sure there's more information behind all this. And I love the unity that I'm seeing in this, because when it came to the different Korans, they united and said, you know what, let's standardize this. When it came to the different pronunciations of how things were being recited, they came together and narrowed it down to whatever they could narrow it down to. That's something that's um, rarely seen. Rarely seen. So I'll always clap for such unity. I'll always enjoy listening to such things. And I hope others can learn from this. I mean, it just takes uh, people that are interested, that are willing to come down, sit, and decide, you know what? Let's not confuse our people. Let's do it this way. And life moves on otherwise this was interesting like i said let me know what you guys think if there's anything you want me to react to let me know down below um just comment the link or the name or react to it make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video